Pancreatic cancer is horrible. 12% of patients are still alive five years after diagnosis. Why is it like this? Well, the name pancreatic cancer refers to more than one thing. Steve Jobs had pancreatic cancer, but specifically, he had a gastroenteropancreatic neuroendocrine tumor. GEPnet. The GI tract has cells that contain serotonin. This lets the gut communicate with the brain. GEPnets arise from GI tract cells that contain serotonin, but these tumors used to be called carcinoids. Carcin being the base of the word carcinoma, referring to cancer. Oid being a suffix meaning to resemble, but in practice used in a diminished sense. Carcinoids, GEPnets, are like cancer, but not as bad as carcinoma. They can still be really horrible. Most commonly, pancreatic cancer is pancreatic adenocarcinoma. Adeno referring to gland, an organ that secretes chemicals. You'll also see it called exocrine pancreatic cancer. Endocrine means secreting into the bloodstream hormones. Exocrine means secreting into a duct, and this is the problem. The pancreas releases digestive substances. Adenocarcinoma here blocks the flow of these, which means that the pancreas can end up digesting itself when the substances get backed up. What about using medicines to get rid of it? You could try, but the problem is that pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma grows a thick, hard, fibrous shell called a stroma that doesn't let any current medicine in. More than 60% of the tumor is usually stroma. It's the only cancer that does this. Well, then how about surgery? The pancreas is right where critical vascular structures are. It's right next to the celiac trunk, where blood from the heart directly supplies the entire GI tract. The pancreas is long. It spans to the hepatic artery, where blood goes to the liver. It's at the port Portosplenic mesenteric confluence where the splenic vein from the spleen and the superior mesenteric vein from the intestines join to make the portal vein, which feeds blood from the gut into the liver. Tumors at the pancreatic tail are a little easier to operate than at the head. You have less risk of cutting into critical blood vessels here, but many times they're inoperable. And if the cancer is already spread around the body, then cutting the pancreas doesn't fix the metastases. The final reason why this is so scary is that to even see anything on CT scan or MRI, you need somewhere around a billion cells. CT exposes you to a lot of radiation and MRIs are expensive, so you don't get these unless you need to. In the pancreatic cancer case, by the time you need those, the disease might already be inoperable. So what can you do? There's a couple of early signs. If you lose 20 to 30 pounds in a few weeks and you didn't mean to, get that checked out. If you have sudden, unexplained loss of appetite, persistent stomach pain that radiates to your back, if you become bloated after eating just a little bit, if you're jaundiced, which is never normal, get it checked out. Those symptoms together will for sure prompt at least a scan to see what's up. We're getting a little bit better at treating this and survival is getting a little bit better, but all of these are reasons why pancreatic cancer is still so scary.